Oh, here we are. Sorry, Ron, we're already into a wonderful interview. It is going to be Tammy Maltby is back. She was the co-host of Aspiring Women, the two-time Emmy Award-winning NRB TV talk show of the year. Her books express very clearly a heart for helping women live rich, authentic lives. It's a joy to welcome her back from Colorado Springs, Colorado, the place everybody seems to want to live down there. And just reading this new book, it's hard to believe that your place, your place of living was once a pressure cooker, an overwhelming dark pressure cooker, Tammy. Without a doubt, it was a pressure cooker. And I think you can relate to this, we can all relate to it on some level that the outside of our life does not mirror the inside of our lives. And what's actually happening inside of us, there's this, I, this fear that if people really know the reality of my life, who I am, what I'm walking through, will I be enough? Will I be enough for others? And ultimately, am I enough for God? And does God see me in the circumstance that I'm in? We really struggle with those things. Well, the title of the book for me was a giveaway. <laughs> <laughs> the God Who Sees. In, in, it was personalized right. by Hagar. That's right. That's in right. Uh, Genesis, mm -hmm. she inspired you. Mm -hmm. Tell us how you and Hagar connected mm. in your place of crisis. You know, I love about Hagar's story is that she was doing what she needed to do. She was in the situation God had called her into. Who was she? And, well, she was a slave. She was a slave girl, and she was serving others, and, uh, and yet she became pregnant um, outside of a marriage situation, as we can, many women can relate to today. And she was sent to a wilderness place um, with her child. And because she, the woman she was serving, yes. Abraham's wife, Sarah, yes. got a little t ticked off, yeah. a little jealous yes. and uh, resentful of her. Yes, rightly so. And yet she, it was her idea all along. <laughs> so she ended up dealing with life circumstances in an isolated situation with a child that she loved certain that God did not see her, certain that God could not see the travail she was walking through or the suffering she was walking through, that she was isolated and alone. But the most amazing thing happens is that God comes to Hagar and he said, I have heard your misery. I have heard your cries. I have heard your desperation. And in doing so, I'm telling you to go back to the situation you were in and that I will bless you in that situation. I see you, I will bless you, you have to trust me. And of course, we know the story, out of her life and her child came a whole nation. So God was really saying to Hagar, not just I see you, I will be enough for you. Yes. How did you get that message in your, I hope everybody was here from the top of the hour. That, that opening paragraph was, well, let me out of here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, at that particular story, at that point, I was in an airport. I had just spoke to several women's events, and it was four days. My flight had gotten uh, postponed and canceled, and I was very tired and exhausted. I did not believe that God saw the circumstances of my life. I kept crying out to God, when are you going to deliver me? When are you going to take away this pain? When are you going to fix my life? When are you going to bring my family back? into a co cohesive, healed place. And I'm sitting at this airport and tears just start running down my face because I really was convinced God did not see me. He did not see how I was travailing, how hard I was working for Him. And yet in that moment, the Lord said to me, Tammy, turn around. And I'm thinking, okay, turn around in my life, take a new direction. You know, what is God saying? Walk the other way. Yeah, the walk the other way, exactly. And um, literally he said, no, turn around. And Angela Thomas, who is a friend of mine, was writing a book about being a single mom. And I turned around, and there was this book in this bookstore at the airport. And I thought, oh, God, so amazing your timing. God's link to this dimension is his timing. When we see his timing, it is his voice to us that he is speaking to us. Mm -hmm. Pay attention. It's like a hug from heaven. It is, it's like a kiss from God. And I turned around and I had four hours because of the delayed flight to actually read this book. And how deeply it encouraged me that in the midst of my choices, because my sinful choices are sinful choices done against us. 
we find ourselves sinning in response to the sinful choices done against us. In the mix of all of that, God said, Tammy, I see you. I will be there for you. I am your vanguard and I'm your rear guard. I will see you. You call out to me and I will be there for you in the midst of all of it. And he has. Four teenagers at the time, were they all teens? They were all teens. That would be enough to make oh, anyone really crazy. Wow. <laughs> and, and, yeah, they and were. No dad on the scene, a, yeah. a daughter pregnant at 19, just truly an overwhelming situation. Yeah, it, was. it really was. But God mm -hmm. has brought you through. Yes, he has. That. What, was, it a, was it a long journey out of the overwhelm or did you begin to really experience peace and provision? Right I, think, I think healing comes in the light. Healing comes with truth. And we have to start telling ourselves the truth about who God is and how God sees us before it really gets into who we are. We have to be honest about the circumstances of our lives. We have to be truth tellers about what we're actually walking through. And I think it's very fearful in the Christian community, um, faith-based community. It's hard sometimes to be honest about what we're living with. But God calls us to walk into the light with discernment, with wisdom, to walk into the light with people that, are, that show up for us, yeah. wise people that can speak back into our lives the truth of what God says about us. We're supposed to bear one another's burdens. We and are. if we don't know what they are, if That's we're right. all pretending everything's just ducky, yeah. uh, we're missing a lot of ministry potential. Watch and pray, we talked about already today. I love your chapter, lean, lean, lean. Mm. And you say pride can be your biggest enemy. Yeah. This is where the coming clean, getting honest, mm -hmm. is so important. And I love your emphasis on secrets. And you make mm -hmm. the point, some of them are trivial, harmless, merely personal. But as you say, secrets can keep us stuck in negative patterns and secrets can separate us from God. Mm -hmm. There are no secrets with God. That is the, that, that's a revelation that I had to come to. There are no secrets with God. God sees everything. Psalm 90 verse 8, mm -hmm. you have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins in the light of your presence. Yes. That's what David said. Mm -hmm. Like there's no hiding anything here. Mm -hmm. But the good news is, because for many people, as well as myself, that can be a fearful thing. Mm -hmm. When you think about God seeing everything, you know, when I say the God who sees you, it brings me great comfort. It's because now I understand the nature of God, that he sees me in the midst of everything. My sin, my victories, the sin done against me, my sinful choices, and my victories. He sees everything. And so we need to change. We have to have what I call a miracle of a perspective change. We need to see God in a new way. We need to see that He sees us. He steps into our circumstances. He steps into our reality. And He says, in the midst of all of this, I'm going to take the brokenness, the sin, the successes, and I'm going to weave them together in a tapestry to bring all things together, all things together for your good. And you know, that's a walk, it's a trust walk, it's a faith walk, it's every day we have to wake up and renew our minds with a perspective change. Yes, God sees us, yes, He's for us, and yes, He sees everything, but in the midst of it, He's gonna turn it, and He's gonna bring good out of it. Mm. <sighs> Trauma can affect our view of God. Mm. And you talk about how a misconception about God can rob us yes. of the comfort and help we need during the hard times. Yes. I am meeting so many women, I'm sure you are too, they have not been loved well. Right. They've been wounded yes. in relationships yes. with men. Yes. And mm. they haven't experienced God. Mm -hmm. Some of them are Christians. Mm -hmm. Now, did you have a distorted view I, I of God? I actually didn't, and that, and I'm very thankful for that. I had a father that showed up for me. I had a father that loved me. Um, in fact, my father just passed away three weeks ago after 64 years of marriage to my mom. He was a very faithful man. But I still had distorted images of how my performance affected God's love for me. And I think for many women, we're so performance-driven. We care, we're caregivers. We're life givers. We give life to those around us. And if we're not doing it perfectly, 
uh, if we're not doing it uh, in our way of what perfect looks like, we believe that, we're, we're, that God sees us less. The reality is God sees the totality of our lives. He understands why we are who we are, how we were raised, how we were loved well, how we weren't loved well. And he takes all of that and he said, I want to give you a perspective that is the way I love you and the way I want to enter your reality. But it takes effort in this way on our part to reach out. You know, the Word of God says when we seek Him diligently, He will be found. You talk about choosing light-filled living. Yes. I like that. We have just a minute, but just catch us up on your life, your kids, your grandchildren. Yes, I have four grown children now, uh, soon to be four great, uh, four grandchildren, excuse me, four grown children, four grandchildren. Uh, two soon babies to be, on the way. Two babies on the way. And you know, God's I guess my heart for women tonight or today in this moment is that they will know that whatever the circumstances is, they are seen by God, that God sees them. They are not isolated in some wilderness place. I remember when my son Sam was at a camp in upstate New York and, and he, 12 hours later, he was still in upstate New York, flight after flight after flight was delayed. And he called me at the end of that 12 hours and he said, Mom, Aren't you aware that I've been here in New York City for 12 hours? Aren't you worried about me? And I hung up the phone and the Holy Spirit said to me, Tammy, I do that for you all the time. You are in some wilderness place. You don't think I see, you don't think I know, but I am doing everything to bring you back into relationship with me. That is the God that sees you. He, he shows up, he steps in, he is mindful of you to have the encouragement, the courage today to know that God really loves you, He sees you, and He is intimately aware of everything you're walking through. The God who sees you. And by the way, Tammy is remarried. And, Happily uh, so. Congratulations, <laughs> Tammy. I'm gonna quote you when you say in your book, let God shine His light not only on your hidden sins and secrets, but on your essential loveliness, your lovedness. I hope Tammy can convince you as you take the journey with her. The book is at our e-store. It does come with an eight-week study guide, and it is rich. And if you would like a safe place to share a secret, maybe you've never told anybody, oh, it does such destructive work. The Bible says we're to confess our sins. You can have prayer right now. You can ho come home to God who sees and loves you by calling our toll-free prayer line right now or anytime. Tammy, thank you. Thank you. God bless it's you. It's an honor. Keep it's an safe. honor to be back. here. Yes. Happy 50th, by the way. Thank you. Very exciting. Thank you. And we'll be back, so stay tuned.